Discipline. How many of you enjoy being disciplined? How many of you enjoy disciplining your children? So if you don't enjoy it and you don't enjoy administering it, why do you do it? Because without discipline, you're out of balance all the time. If you don't have discipline, you don't have balance. You're just not going to have balance. You can't have it. You can't keep it. And you must discipline your children. I've told this many times. I once heard a mother say, I love my son too much. I just can't discipline him. She thought it was an act of love that the child not be disciplined. Some people don't spank because they think that they love too much to spank. I can tell you I've never received a warmer hug than the one I got after I spanked the child. And you say, did they like it? No. Did you like it? No. But before I spanked the child, I put my arms around the child. I told them how much I loved them and how much this couldn't be a part of their life. Because I love them, it can't be a part of your life. And if you go there in rebellion, it's going to mean punishment, not because I want it, but because it's for your good. And I don't know how many times I've had the child say to me, Dad, I know you did it because you love me. Hug me in tenderness. Do not convince yourself that the child left on their own will love you late in life for it. They will not. You've got to teach them the things that they've got to know. They've got to learn that whatever you cook, they need to eat. Now, John Rodden may be a, an exception to this. Because he's got problems that textures trigger. And it's not just, you know, so we got to understand that. Don't be crazy about your discipline. But if for goodness sakes, if you make chicken and dumplings and, 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 and green beans and things out of the garden, and then your child comes and goes, Yee, I don't like that. You say, well, honey, you just sit there and you don't have to eat anything. But you're not eating again until supper, and that's in six hours. You know what will happen? They might try you the first time. They won't try you the second time. No child has died in six hours without food. She went without formula. Oh my goodness. She was 23 months and she went without formula. That's a hard hit child. But you've got to, you've got to do that. And you can't back up saying, oh, I miss love them so much. It's not love that causes you to buckle. Because when you buckle, do you know the lesson you just taught? Mm -hmm. And dads, don't send them to mom, and moms don't send them to dad. When you do that, what lesson do you teach them? Dad's a booger, but mom's a pushover. So they don't they won't come to dad. They go to mom. And mom will go, well, okay, honey. I think that'd be okay. You don't ask dad anymore. Mom, you know what you just did? You cut off all the legs off of dad. You just did it. You cut them off. He's got no standing to discipline with the kids. Because when he do, when he do, when he do, did I really say when he do? <laughs> when he does, you'll be a jerk. You can't do that. If you're a parent, here's one of the best things you can do. Have you had, let's say you're the mom. Huh? Your child says to you, can I go to, can I uh, wear a mini skirt and go topless? You can say, well, honey, have you, have you asked your father about that? Then if he says no, then you, then you take it. Same thing. Fathers, your daughter, your, your son, ask you, dad, can I go to do this? You can say, well, have you, have you talked to your mother about that? They say, no, Dad, I've just seen you. Then you take that. Mom, that may not have been what Dad wanted to do, but Dad was Dad, and if he did it, don't you open your mouth about it. 
Mom may choose something that dad didn't do, but dad shut your mouth about it. Whichever parent speaks, let them be. Now, when you get together as a couple, you can talk about it if you want. Don't yell. Don't scream. You can talk about it. And, if, and you need to listen to the other half of your, of your marriage partner. You need to listen to them. Because they see things that you don't see. Ladies see things that guys don't see. Guys see things that ladies don't see. You are not a complete couple, no matter who you are. Even if you're pastor of the church. Even if you're the apostle Paul. You are not complete by yourself. So listen to the other person. Well, we got stuck on this one, didn't we? Let's get on. This has been a soak right there. Verse 13. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For its profit is better than the profit of silver and its gain is better than fine gold. She, that's wisdom, is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who hold fast, hold her fast. What's the subject of 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? Wisdom. If they talk so much about wisdom, do you think it's a good thing to pray for wisdom? I think it's a real good thing to pray for wisdom. I don't have time in this message to ask you all the benefits of wisdom because it would take a long time to go through and pick each one of these out and talk to them. Just know there's a bold load of benefits to wisdom. Let's go to 19. The Lord by wisdom found, or oh, we're still on wisdom. The Lord by wisdom found in the earth, and by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up, and the skies dripped with dew. When you're asking God for wisdom, and God gives you wisdom, he's giving you the best gift he has. The best gift he has is not a new Camaro. The best gift he has is wisdom. 21, my son, let them not depart from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and discretion so that they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck, that you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor of the onslaught of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. What will, what will do all of those things? The last, how many verses does that be? 15 or 20? Wisdom, if you ask the wisdom of God, and the wisdom of God in just redneck is ask God to make your thinking his thinking. And you'll have wisdom in every area. Verse 27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to the neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I'll give it. When you have it with you, that's all about giving. That's all about being good when you had a chance. Being good when you have a shot. When you have a chance to do good for somebody, don't put it off. Don't put it off. If you believe it's something the Lord would have you do. Now, if you're not sure if the Lord will have you do it, okay, then put it off. But if you're, but if it's something you need to do, but you're just not willing to, you think it's going to cost you later, then you need to do it. Do not devise harm against your neighbor while he lives in security beside you. Do not contend with a man without cause if he's done harm, if he's done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence. Do not choose any of his ways for the crooked man is an abomination to the Lord, but he is intimate with the upright. The promise to you is if you will stay out of the ditches, the ones that you saw coming, if you'll stay on the narrow path, if you'll walk on the straight way, when you understand what the straight way is, what is the promise? The promise is God will be intimate with you. He will be intimate with you. You will pray and he will hear. He will speak and you will hear. You will ask because he put it in your heart to ask and he will answer it before you can get it out of your mouth. 
But you've got to develop that intimate relation. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. That is just a fact jack. But he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. That too is a fact. That's the tales of the head. Though he scoffs at the scoffers, yet he gives grace to the afflicted. The wise will inherit honor, but fools display dishonor. Now you say, Pastor, that is a, that is a soaking. I'm, my skin is turning to prunes. We've been soaking so long. But what I'm going to try to do, this is me personally. I am not as smart as many of you. And my memory is a fraction of what it is for most of you. So if I'm going to get what I need to get out of this soak, if you were poor little ignorant me, what would you do? Huh? Memorize it? I ain't got enough faith for that. What? I just, I have had this happen so many times where I was reading something and it impressed me and then maybe the next day I'd come back and I'm thinking I'm going to read the next chapter but the Lord would say go back and read it. And, and it might be three or four days before I can, I mean it's like I'm going over and over and over and even if I don't memorize it, it's in my heart and, and it, you know, the, the gist of what he's saying, it just, it just burrows itself down into your heart and you stay there for a while. Yeah, part so that you'll memorize it. Yeah. And the parts that you memorized, if I were Pentecostal, I would say he quickened it to your heart. And the parts that he quickens to your heart will be the things that he brings to your mind when you need a shot. And if you need more of a shot, he'll bring you in for a soak. So for me personally, I find that I have to, I'll probably have to go through it every day, probably for 30 days, before I'll get what some of you could have got Caleb could get it through in one or two days, but it'll take me 30 days. It's just a fact. If it takes me 30 days, then it takes me 30 days, but I'm going to get it. Yes. And you can get it. I hope today, I don't know what the time is, I'm really getting hungry. So it must be close to dinner time. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this time of soaking didn't hurt you. Anymore. I'm hoping that you develop your own shots. And I'm hoping that you find your own soaks. And you ain't going to do it unless you sit down in God's Word and even read the these and thous and the begats. Go through it because oftentimes a shot and a soak is hidden in a place where you wouldn't have found it if you hadn't have read Ecclesiastes. Another life. Amen? Amen. Okay. How many will do as I ask? Thank you very much. <laughs> Jesus, I thank you that you're, you're, you're just true. There's just no other way to say it. We all know the truth of what you're saying to us about this. It's impossible to look at your word and not be filled, not be fed, not be encouraged and helped. It seems that way if you read just a little bit quick, but if you dig at it, if you dig, if you say, I'm not leaving until you bless me, you keep reading. I've never, ever, ever walked away from the scriptures without blessing. Sometimes I had to read a little while, but I always found it because your scriptures are full of diamonds, full of rubies and gold and jewels and gems, <clears throat> pearls that will never leave, never lose their luster. Lord, place your word within us. Give us the shots we need. Lead us to your souls. And help us to remember those when we need them. In your name, Jesus, we'll give you the thanks and praise. Amen. Young Amen. people, we're going to be in our house. We're going to have corn on the cob. We're going to have watermelon. We're going to have cheeseburgers.